Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so this chapter of Black Clover 125 surprised me in a few ways, not just the fact that it came out a day early on Wednesday, which completely threw out my schedule. But, uh, yeah, first off, Zach. Zach really surprised me in this chapter. I mean, the first off, like, he can activate his trap magic in thin air. What the fuck? He can place a magic circle in thin air. I always figured that his trap magic had something to do with, like, touching something physically, like someone's body, the ground, the crystal, as we saw, like a wall. I, I just figured that it had to be touching something physically in order to be activated, in order to be used. But the fact that he could put his trap magic in just, like, thin air, that just kind of makes him OP. I mean, literally, if he had, the only limitation he has is that the fact that he needs preparation time. If he had preparation time in order to, like, you know, basically, like, it say he had a fight coming up, like, he knew where the fight was going to happen, he knew when it was going to happen. If he had 24 hours to, to like, put up his ultimate trap magic, like, imagine, uh, Imagine his tr ultimate trap magic is something like his reflection magic, but like on a much larger, much more powerful scale. Then what he has to do is put four, like make a box of four magic circles, lead the battle to that box, and then he's pretty much just untouchable. He's literally just in a box where he can't be touched, and the enemy will just continuously be set, have their own magic sent back at them. It's pretty. He's pretty much OP at this point. But yeah, the fact that he can uh, use magic circles in thin air completely surprised me. Then he surprised me at the end of the chapter when he started spouting all this nonsense, like, or not even nonsense, all this advice to the other teams, like, hey, you, you need to do this in order to fix yourself, you need to do this in order to fix yourself, and you, you need to do this. It's like, okay, I get it that he would do that for Soul and, Mag and Magna, but the fact that he did for Curse too was like, holy shit, because I, I always assumed, and I still assume that he has, like, some vendetta against those nobles who, like, stick their nose up and, like, say that they're better than the commoners. So the fact that he actually took his time to say, hey, listen, like he still called him out on the fact that he thought he was better than the commoners. But the fact that he actually took his time to say, hey, if you just like put your pride aside and, you know, do this and this, you could actually become a more powerful mage than you already are, which is considering, which is like saying a lot because Kirsch is already, Kirsch is already really powerful. I mean, if what, literally if it wasn't for Ass's uh, anti-magic, they probably would have lost his fight. Now, the other thing that surprised me in this chapter was Mimosa. Mimosa really surprised me, and she really shot up in my like my rankings for a top character. Because, I mean, I thought she was out. I literally thought the entire chapter that she was just out. Like, out of the fight completely. Last chapter, we saw her get taken out by Soul. I was like, alright, well, you did your best. You know, you're pretty face to look at, but you're not really you're not really helpful in a fight. And then she surprised me. Apparently, just like the fight, her losing the fight to Soul was the plan all along so she could sneak her seed inside Soul's golem. And have and take control of it. She just needed time, just like uh, Zach needs time in order to activate his trap. She needed time to activate her magic too, which took a lot less time than Zach's plans do. But still, the fact that she was able to take control of Souls like Golem and then use that to destroy, like the crystal, or at least give uh, Asta the chance to destroy the crystal, that took a lot of planning and that put her in a new light to me. Like I always liked the character. She seemed like a nice character and all, and I and I dug her not as much as Noel, but I still dug her. But the fact that she was able to plan something out like that and that her she just acted like she was weak and acted like she lost the fight to Soul just to set up that trap, she put, put her in a new life for me. Like, I actually want to see more of this character now. Like, I want to see her grow even more, see what kind of magic she can come up with. Just not not support magic, just but, like, attack magic too. And, like, the fact that she was able to come up with this plan does, it shows me that she actually has, like, a, a strategical mind. So... I like to see her like lead a battlefield one day, like lead a battle as like the strategist. But uh, yeah, like I said, she completely surprised me in this chapter. I, I was completely blown away by her. She's still not up there on Noel's level, like as my top favorite female, but she made herself up to second place. But yeah, second round's done, at least for Asta's team. Gotta say, I was a little disappointed that Curse got taken out by Asta again for the second time in the exact, not the exact same way, but still taken out the same way, like basically a blow to the head and got knocked out. Although, I will say, I will say that, you know, the fact that he was able to, like, get past his prejudice in this chapter, you know, it makes me uh, see the character in a new light. It makes me want to see a little bit more of the character. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Like I predicted, as the team moved on to the semifinals. Now, next is up is, um, I think, Finn Ross team versus his brother's team, which, again, I already predicted that Finn Ross team's going to lose with Finn Ross beating his brother, though. So, yeah, let's see if that happens in the next chapter. I, I stand by my prediction from the prediction video. I think for all, even even though we like Leo, even though I like Leopold, I still don't think we're invested in him enough to see him, like, move on to the semifinals. And for all, even though I like the character, I don't think he actually cares about winning this tournament. 
he just wants to prove himself to his brother. And so if he can do that in this fight and still lose like the tournament, then they'll probably do that. Still because and I also still think that Zach has like a vendetta against, you know, nobles who think they're better than everyone else and obviously Finrod's brother thinks he's better than other people. He thinks he's better than other nobles as well, so I like to see Zach put him in his place too. But uh yeah, and that's it for a chapter review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Comment down below with your thoughts and uh catch you guys later. Peace.